Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we're going to dive into a little bit of the technical side of mixing and a little bit of science here talking about the Fletcher Munson curves or equal loudness contours and their implications for your mixes because if you know what these things are and you know how that affects how you mix you can really help your mixes translate a lot better. So let me jump over to what these things are. Here are the Fletcher Munson curve or the equal loudness contours. You can hear two terms for these things. The original from 1933 based on two scientists' work, of course, named Fletcher and Munson, are the Fletcher-Munson curves, and then they were updated a little bit later. They're more commonly referred to as equal loudness contours in the scientific community nowadays, but Fletcher-Munson kind of sticks in the audio world. They're really about the same thing, just been slightly updated over the years. But equal loudness contour really gives you an idea of what this thing means. So these red lines show what level is needed to be perceived as equal loudness by human hearing, at different intensity levels or dB levels. So human hearing is most sensitive to the mid range around two to five K, two to five kilohertz. That's where most voices have their energy. So it kind of makes sense. You wanna be able to understand people when they're talking to you, you're most sensitive to that range. At lower volumes, our ears do not respond as well to higher and lower frequency information. So if you look at the very bottom red line here, which represents a pretty soft level, in order to achieve the same perceived level as this mid-range right down at the bottom of the curve, you would need to push more level into the top end and a lot more into the bottom end to get them to sound equal. The louder we go, the more the curve flattens out and we have more equal perceived loudness. So the softer it is, the more you just hear the mid-range, the louder it is, the more even it sounds. So signals need to be at different levels in order to be perceived as having the same volume. Let's jump over to a mix really quickly and hear this in action. I'm gonna start with the mix at full level. I'm gonna drop this fader down. As it goes down, listen really closely as it gets softer and you'll notice it sounds like the very top end and definitely the bottom end drop out and you hear more of the mid and upper mid range information. Listen. It's really soft right there, but you really hear that mid-range. Now I'm gonna boost it up and hear how it seems to even out and the low end gets fuller as I really boost it. Bring it down again. It's almost like that low end disappears completely. low ends back in there. So what does this mean in terms of mixing? First of all, start to mix at kind of low levels. That helps you focus on that mid-range, which is so important for your mix. And then gradually increase it to a louder, non-fatiguing level that you could mix at for like hours without getting fatigued. That will be your like your standard level you're mixing at. Then once you've got most of your mix going, turn it up kind of loud. You have to hear it loud sometimes too to hear how that equal loudness contour kind of works at the louder volume. So if it sounds just a little bright and full, almost a little bit boomy when it's loud and more mid-range focused when it's soft, your mix is probably in a good place to translate to different playback systems and listening environments and you're really taking advantage of those Fletcher Munson curves. This is all assuming you have pretty good monitoring to check this out on, of course, as well. So really, if we take a look at these and with lower volumes, we're hearing mostly mid-range, and at higher volumes, you might sound a little bit bright and a little bit big in the low end. You're probably in a good place and you're taking advantage of natural human hearing to get your mixes to sound good no matter what level they are played at. So there it is, some really simple tips where we can use these Fletcher Munson curves or equal loudness contours to help us in our mixes. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.